One of the things you may have noticed is that in accounting, we do a lot of things multiple times. And that's because we want to be sure that everything is there and everything is correct. So after you have prepared all the adjusting journal entries and they have been journalized and posted to the appropriate ledgers, we create another trial balance from those ledger accounts. The adjusted trial balance shows whether the balances of all the accounts, including those that have been adjusted at the end of the accounting period, continue to prove the equality of debits and credit balances in the ledger. We then use this adjusted trial balance as the basis for the preparation of our financial statements. An adjusted trial balance for Sierra Corporation is shown here. And you'll notice that it's the accounts that are in red are the ones that we had adjusted. After we have created our adjustments, we go back to ascertain was the effect that of which we expected. Had we done one of those entries wrong, we would be able to see it here. So for example, if we had increased supplies rather than decreased it, instead of seeing 1,000 in supplies, we would have 4,000. We know that's not right, and we would go back. Which of these statements is incorrect in regards to the adjusted trial balance? I'll give you just a moment to read through these and think it through. The adjusted trial balance lists the account balances segregated by assets and liabilities. This is not true. This is incorrect. Because remember, it just shows all your assets, your liabilities, your owner's equities, your revenues, and your expenses. We create the financial statements directly from the adjusted trial balance. We begin with the income statement move to the retained earnings, and then the balance sheet. Starting with the income statement, we pull revenues and expense amounts and translate them over to the income statement. We then can generate net income. We pull the beginning retained earnings from the adjusted trial balance. We add what we've calculated our net income to be. We look for any dividends and reduce by those dividends to tell us what our retained earnings on October 31st will be. That amount will impact our balance sheet. We translate all the normal assets and liability account amounts over we pull common stock over from the adjusted trial balance. We recognize what the new retained earnings are and calculate total stockholders equity. So as you can see, with an adjusted trial balance, you create the entire set of financial statements. However, they have to be created in a definitive order. The income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and then the balance sheet. Also included a little bit in this particular uh, chapter is some conversation about the quality of earnings. Earnings management is what we call the planned timing of revenues, expenses, gains and losses to smooth out bumps in our net income. Companies engage in what's called earnings management uh, through either one-time items that can prop up our earnings numbers, inflating revenues in the short run, or improper journal injuries. 
earnings management is really important to be aware of because <clears throat> sometimes things in earnings management, such as, okay, well, we'll sell this asset to prop up our numbers, is okay. But things such as inflating revenues and improper adjusting entries have created a huge lack of faith in accounting information. A result of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act and some of the accountability that is laid in there, there are a lot of companies that are working on improving the quality of their financial reporting. Uh, what is called quality of earnings is when companies provide really full and transparent information. This is really important because <clears throat> as a result of the financial crisis of the early 2000s, Developing a good relationship with the users of your financial information is important because if they don't have any faith, they're either not going to buy the stock or they're not going to extend credits. So here we have Skolnick Company organized in April of 2017. They create quarterly financial statements. So your quarters are January, February, and March is the first quarter. April, May, and June is the second quarter. July, August, and September is the third quarter. October, November, and December is the fourth quarter, using a calendar year and not a fiscal year, of course. So we're asked to determine the net income for the quarter April 1st to June 30th. We have the adjusted trial balance here, and then determine what total assets and total liabilities are at June 30th, and determine what the balance and retained earnings is at June 30th, 2017. To determine the net income for the quarter ended April 1st, <clears throat> oh, sorry, the quarter ended June 30th, we begin by transferring our revenues and we have service revenues of 14,200. We also have additional rent revenues of 800, giving us total revenues of $15,000. We transfer over the various expenses. So we have the salaries and wages expense, rent, depreciation, utilities, and supplies. And finally, the interest expense. We have a total of 12,510 expenses, giving us, as a difference from our $15,000 in revenues, net income of $2,490. The next question asks us to determine the total assets and the total liabilities as of June 30th. So we will transfer over those asset accounts from cash, accounts receivable, monies owed to us. We have a claim against somebody else. Supplies on hand, prepaid rent, so rent that is still due to us. We have equipment and its associated contra account accumulated depreciation, and total assets of 23,350. We follow this same logic and transfer over our liabilities of notes payable, accounts payable, unearned rent revenue, salaries and wages payables, interest payable, for total liabilities is 7,460. Now, if assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, then we know what the total amount of owner's equity is right now. It's assets minus liabilities. Now, how that breaks down differs because there's common stock and paid in capital, and then there's the earned capital. That earned capital is retained earnings. So what is the balance of the retained earnings account on June 30th? We start with what we had on April 1st. 
and that is there were not any retained earnings because this is a new company. We add net income of 2,490. And on our adjusted trial balance, there were dividends paid out of 600. That leaves us with continued retained earnings moving forward of $1,890 on June 30th. Combined with our owners or with our common stock, and then add the liabilities to that amount, and we will have the same amount as our total assets. Next, we'll talk about closing the books and what that is. However, this is complete through completing the financial statements for a specific period. 